Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 17 of the chapter Electrochemistry. We were discussing the variation of conductivity and molar conductivity with concentration and I told you about strong electrolytes. Let us now understand what happens when you have a weak electrolyte and how does the concentration of a weak electrolyte affect its conductivity or molar conductivity. But before we talk of conductivity, let us understand what happens when you put a weak electrolyte into solution. A weak electrolyte is one that does not completely dissociate when you put it in a solvent. So uh, as you put it inside, the, there are two opposing reactions that go on. That is the reactant that you added is going to break down into its ions but at the same time this reaction is not so feasible therefore some of the product is recombining and again giving you the reactant as a result of which an equilibrium establishes. So at any point uh, or at any concentration such an equilibrium is established and the concentration of the reactant that is the electrolyte and the dissociated form that the concentrations become fixed. As you go on diluting a solution, the distance between the ions increases and therefore the ions cannot recombine to give you back the reactant. Therefore, as you go on increasing dilution or decreasing the concentration of the or if you have, let us say you had one mole of the solute in the solvent and you start increasing the solvent and the amount of solute remains the same. As the amount of solvent increased, the volume increased. As the volume increased, that one mole of uh, the solute that had been added is now present in a larger volume. So what will happen? The ions, the dissociated form does not collide as much so as to result in the formation of the reactant. So as dilution increases, the dissociation, the degree of dissociation of the electrolyte or the weak electrolyte, it increases. And as the degree of dissociation increases, the number of ions present increases and that will affect the, uh, the conductance. But then another thing that is the, the number of ions at extreme dilution, let us say that the concentration is almost approaching zero, where we say that uh, the molar conductivity is lambda naught m. At that point, the distance between the ions would be so much that the conductivity would be affected by that. So what is the conductivity affected by? Let us start understanding that using uh, uh, regarding the weak electrolytes. The degree of dissociation which is represented by alpha, it increases with dilution because as you keep on diluting the ions, the weak electrolyte ionizes or it dissociates but due to the distance between the ions they do not associate back. So the degree of dissociation increases with dilution. Therefore, for such electrolytes, the change in the molar conductivity, that is lambda m, is due to the increase in the degree of dissociation. So the conductivity, molar conductivity is, is changing because the change in molar conductivity is because there is an increase in the degree of dissociation. The number of ions in the solution is increasing and therefore conductivity is increasing. And consequently, the number of ions in total volume of the solution containing one mole is increasing and that is going to affect the conductivity. In such cases, molar conductivity, that is lambda m, increases steeply on dilution. You remember, we did KCl, which is a strong electrolyte, and when we added it to water, we found that its molar conductivity in comparison to its concentration, it shows a regular, it is a straight line. And if you extrapolate this, the point where it hits the lambda m, that is the molar conductivity, the point where it touches it, and it means the concentration is going on decreasing, at that point we call it lambda naught m, where we say that the concentration is uh, almost zero. At that point where it intersects, the point of intersection would be lambda naught m. But in the case of a weak electrolyte, look at this curve, the weak electrolyte is CH3COOH. What happens that as you go on decreasing the concentration now, till you are decreasing the concentration, not much of a change. But at lower concentrations, all of a sudden there is a steep increase in the conductivity. 
and if there is a steep increase in the molar conductivity you cannot extrapolate it now like you did it in the case of a strong electrolyte the the curve was diagonal like this and it would cut across but here there's a steep rise with very very little decrease in uh, the concentration therefore it is not possible to uh, reach molar conductivity that is the limiting molar conductivity by extrapolation in the case of weak electrolytes so this is a problem if you cannot obtain it from the graph what is the other way how you can find out the limiting molar conductivity we studied in the previous video that you can calculate limited limiting molar conductivity with the help of kolrosch law the kolrosch law is the law of independent migration of ions which says that the molar conductivities of all ions individual ions is a characteristic of the themselves therefore when you add them together when you have a salt which has been added you can calculate the molar conductivity theoretically just by knowing or referring to the values of the molar conductivities of the individual ions and then summing them up so in the case of weak electrolytes it is necessary that whenever we want to find out lambda not m that is the limiting molar conductivity we need to find out the individual molar conductivities of the ions from the table and then calculate from there so uh, in such cases lambda m increases steeply on dilution especially at low concentrations do you see this therefore no extrapolation can be done in order to obtain lambda not m at concentrations which are ap approaching zero that is at very very extremely low concentrations the degree of dissociation is almost one at that when the dilution is so much that the ions as it is ionizing the distance between the ions is so much that it is simply not possible for them to recombine to give you the reactant at that point we say the weak electrolyte kind of is acting as a strong electrolyte because the degree of dissociation is almost one but the problem here is that in per unit volume the number of ions present in the solution is so low that that the conductivity would be affected by that that would be kind of limiting the conductivity so at concentrations which approach zero the degree of dissociation is almost equal to 1 therefore the limiting conductivity is calculated using the kolrosch's law at any concentration c if we take any concentration to be c if alpha is the degree of dissociation we find that the degree of dissociation is equal to the ratio between the molar conductivity and the limiting molar conductivity so alpha that is degree of dissociation is equal to lambda m upon lambda not m now talking of alpha what is degree of dissociation if you remember you had done the chapter uh, chemical equilibrium in class 11 and let us just do one equation there let us say that you have an electrolyte like a which dissociates into b plus c and uh, uh, i'm just this is just an example and you started with the whole of a initially at the initial point you had the reactant but there was no product the concentration of the products was zero but let us say that alpha was the degree that dissociated alpha of 1 alpha of the whole dissociated then at equilibrium the concentration of the products would be if alpha one mole of this breaks down you get one mole of b and one mole of c so if alpha number of moles dissociate then the number of moles of b and c would also be alpha but alpha is the degree of dissociation of from one whole but if the concentration initial concentration was c and not one then the amount dissociated would be alpha of c so the concentration of b at equilibrium would be c alpha and the concentration of c also would be c alpha and what would be the concentration at a at a it would be equal to c minus c alpha the concentration would be c was the initial concentration out of which c alpha got dissociated therefore the concentration at equilibrium for a would be c minus c alpha and if you take c common it becomes c1 minus alpha you remember this then we found out the equilibrium constant for such an acid if it is an acid ka as we call it k 
Ka is equal to what is the equilibrium constant? It is the ratio of the concentrations of the products divided by the concentrations of the reactants raised to the powers of their stoichiometric coefficients. Now, since you have C alpha and C alpha and the number of moles is 1, so the concentration of products would be C alpha into C alpha, which is C alpha square, upon the concentration of the reactant at equilibrium, which is C1 minus alpha, which we do. C1 minus alpha, and if you solve this, this comes out to be the C and C gets cancelled. So in the numerator, you have only 1 C and alpha square upon 1 minus alpha. That was Ka. We know, just now we studied, that what is alpha according to our study of uh, electrochemistry? What is alpha for a weak electrolyte? Alpha is the, is the ratio between the molar conductivity and the limiting molar conductivity. So let us substitute the value of alpha in this equation for the equilibrium constant. Substituting the value of alpha, we get that C alpha square alpha square is substitute the value of alpha alpha is lambda m upon lambda naught m whole square would be lambda m square upon lambda naught m square right instead of writing whole square i've just written it in the numerator and the denominator to make the calculations easier and then what else do you have in the denominator you have one minus alpha so into one minus and what is alpha alpha is again lambda m upon lambda naught m substituting this value which is equal to when you solve this you get c lambda m square remains as such but in the denominator now take lambda naught m square keep one lambda naught m outside the bracket and take one inside why because i want to cancel this out so this will become lambda naught m into lambda naught m minus lambda naught m into lambda m upon lambda naught m the lambda naught m and the lambda naught m will get cancelled out. So you'll be left with lambda naught m into lambda naught m minus lambda m. This is the relationship that you will get for Ka, for equilibrium constant. So this was the theoretical part of the, um, of how the, uh, what, uh, the conduction, conductivity and molar conductivity are affected by a change in concentration. Let me now explain the two applications of Kohl-Roche law and then I'll, I'll solve two numerical problems to explain this better to you. What are the applications of Kohl-Roche law? First, the Kohl-Roche law helps us to calculate the value of the limiting molar conductivity from the molar conductivities, limiting molar conductivities of the individual ions. That is represented by the small lambda. So this lambda naught of the individual ions, you just find the sum of them and that will give you the lambda naught m for the electrolyte. That is one. The second application for weak electrolytes especially is to calculate, it helps us to calculate alpha, that is the degree of dissociation of a weak electrolyte. And you can calculate the degree of dissociation of a weak electrolyte if you know, how can you calculate degree of dissociation if you know lambda m if you know lambda naught m for a particular concentration so we say we can calculate the degree of dissociation of a weak electrolyte if we know lambda m and lambda naught m at a given concentration c and now i'll solve two numerical problems and then finish this video now this is question 3.9 it is a solved example of your textbook what does the question say it says that the conductivity of this, this moles per liter acetic acid, that is concentration is given to you, is 4.95 into 10 to the power minus 5 simons per centimeter. This is the conductivity. And what is conductivity? Conductivity is kappa. You have to calculate its dissociation constant, that is the equilibrium constant K. K for dissociation, Ka is to be calculated. If lambda naught m for, or Kc, let us call it the dissociation constant, uh, if lambda naught m for CH3COH is 390.5 simon centimeter square mole inverse. Let us first write down what all do we have. We have the concentration of the solution, that is acetic acid. Concentration is 0 0.001028 moles per liter. Then the value of kappa is given to us, that is conductivity is 4.95 into 10 to the power 5 simon centimeter inverse you have to calculate the dissociation constant that is k k a is to be calculated and for that you must have the degree of dissociation also 
So you need to calculate alpha, you need to calculate Ka. And you need to calculate dissociation constant if lambda naught m is given to us. Lambda naught m is equal to 390.5 Simon centimeter square mole inverse. Okay, so these are the things that are given to us. In order to calculate uh, alpha, that is the degree of dissociation, what is degree of dissociation? It is lambda m upon lambda naught m. So in order to calculate Ka, we must know alpha. And in order to know alpha, we must know lambda m. So the first step would be to calculate lambda m. What is molar conductivity? Lambda m is equal to kappa, that is conductivity upon concentration, right? It is equal to kappa upon concentration, which is equal to kappa is given to us. 4.95 into 10 to the power of 5 Simons per centimeter. Now, you've been given the uh, conductivity in Simons per centimeter and the concentration is in moles per liter. Liter and centimeter inverse. Liter is decimeter cube. A liter is decimeter cube and centimeter inverse. So in order to change the units, you remember what are you supposed to do? You'll be multiplying, you'll be dividing this value of concentration by a thousand. So what is concentration in the denominator? It is 0 0.001028 mole per liter. And in order to convert the mole per liter into centimeters uh, cube, what do you do? You'll multiply it by 1000. And this will be centimeter cube upon liter, right? Or liter inverse upon liter here and liter inverse here will get cancelled and you will get it in centimeter cube. So what will be the unit here? Centimeter 3 to the power 3 into centimeter to the power minus 1 will be centimeter square. And of course, when you solve this, you will get the value of uh, lambda m and the units would be silence centimeter square mole inverse the mole is in the denominator which is correct for the molar conductivity the unit so and numerically what will this come out to be equal to it is 48.15 this would be 48.15 simons centimeter square mole inverse right so you've calculated the value of lambda m now, from lambda m, you're supposed to calculate alpha. Alpha is lambda m upon lambda naught m. We have the values of both. Lambda m is 48.15 Simon centimeter square mole inverse divided by lambda naught m was given to us, which was 390.5 Simon centimeter square mole inverse. Do you see the same units? They get cancelled out and you get alpha degree of dissociation which is only a number and what will it be? It is 0 0.1233. 0 0.1233. Now that you know alpha, you calculated lambda m, you calculated alpha, you know what is Ka. Ka is equal to C alpha upon 1 minus alpha. Isn't it? C alpha square upon 1 minus alpha which we've just calculated. So C alpha square upon 1 minus alpha, we have the value of alpha and C is given to us, which is 0 0.001028 moles per liter into alpha square is 0 0.1233 whole square upon 1 minus 0 0.1233 is alpha. And when you calculate all of this, you'll get the value of Ka, which would be equal to 1.78 into 10 to the power minus 5. 1.78 into 10 to the power minus 5. You will get the units of moles per liter here. You remember that the value of Ka equilibrium constant is actually uh, the, it is a dimensional, uh, dimensionless uh, quantity. Yet, if you are getting the units here, it only signifies that we are talking in terms of concentration. So, that was the value of Ka. Now I'll solve one in-text question before I wind up this video. Give me a moment. Incidentally, this is the same question number. This is the in-text question 3.9. What is the question? It says that the molar conductivity of 0.025 moles per liter methanoic acid 
is 46.1 sine in centimeter square mole inverse. You have to calculate its degree of dissociation and dissociation constant, that is alpha and k, given lambda naught, now it is small lambda for the individual ions is given. So the uh, molar conductivity for limiting molar conductivity for the individual ions H positive and CH3, uh, sorry, HCOO negative are given to us. So let us first write down what all is given to us and what are we expected to find out and how will we go about. Let us plan how are we going to solve this problem. The molar conductivity of 0.025 mole per liter. So C is given to us, which is 0.025 mole per liter, right? Of is the concentration of the solution. And the molar conductivity, that is lambda m, is given to us, which is 46.1 Simon centimeter square mole inverse. Now, molar conductivity is given to us and limiting molar conductivity is not given to us. So you have to calculate the degree of dissociation, that is alpha is to be calculated and Ka is to be calculated. And what else are you given? You are given the, concern, the limiting molar conductivities of the, indiv of the uh, individual ions, that is H positive is given to us which is equal to H positive is 349.6 Simon centimeter square mole inverse and the limiting molar conductivity of HCOO negative is equal to 54.6 Simon centimeter square mole inverse. So we need to, it is almost similar to the previous one, the only difference is that in the previous problem we were, we were given the limiting molar conductivity and we were supposed to calculate the molar conductivity. And we calculated molar conductivity from the concentration and the value of conductivity which was kappa. But for limiting molar conductivity, we know that limiting molar conductivity for a weak electrolyte is calculated using Kohl-Roche's law. So we find out the sum of the individual molar conductivities of the ions. So the limiting molar conductivity for HCOOH, that is methanoic acid, would be equal to lambda naught H positive plus lambda naught CHCOO negative. And both these values are given to us. What is it? H positive is 349.6 Simon centimeter square mole inverse plus this is 54.6 Simon centimeter square mole inverse which is equal to just the sum of these two which would be equal to 404.2 404.2 Simon centimeter square mole inverse. Now after having done this, we need to find out alpha, that is degree of dissociation. We know degree of dissociation is lambda m upon lambda naught m. And now we have the values of both lambda m and lambda naught m. Let us find out their ratio. Substitute the values. Lambda m is 46.1 Simon centimeter square mole inverse. And lambda naught m we just calculated is 404.2 Simon centimeter square mole inverse. Since you have the same units in the numerator and the denominator, they get cancelled out. And when you calculate this, it, the value of alpha, that is the degree of dissociation, comes out to be approximately equal to 0 0.114. 0 0.114. And then the final step, you have to find out Ka. Ka is C alpha square upon 1 minus alpha. Right? So... C is, the concentration is given to us as 0.025 moles per liter oh. and alpha we've just calculated is 0.114 the square of this divided by 1 minus 0.114 and when you calculate all of this what does it come out to be 3.67 into 10 to the power minus 4. 3.67 into 10 to the power minus 4 and the units would be those of the concentration that is moles per liter. Right? So we found out the values of alpha and Ka and that is what we use Kohl-Roche's law for. And this is how concentration affects the conductivity and molar conductivity of weak and strong electrolytes. With this, I'll finish this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos on chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.